I smoke weed once in a while. I pirate games here and there, or I stream movies and TV shows illegally. We hear this all the time online, whether on YouTube or even on TV. Not only this, but a lot of times we see people commit such crimes on YouTube, even make tutorials about them, like how to get Grand Theft Auto for free, how to get paid apps and music for free, or we may see them throwing a supercar down a rural road where they're clearly breaking the speed limit. So how can all these people safely continue to do this and post about it online without any repercussions? Well, first of all, one similarity between many of these cases is that they are usually civil cases, not criminal. The offense described in such confessions are usually monetary losses. Pirating or streaming loses big corporations money but does not propose any harm to public safety so the government doesn't really care about them. To bring a civil case to trial, a party must first file a complaint, so in such scenarios, the corporations would have to file a complaint. But the problem is, what are they going to sue for? 99 cents for a nap? $6 for a movie ticket? Or perhaps even a solid $30 for a month of Adobe Creative Cloud subscription? Even if they were promoting venues to pirate such software and media, how would they be able to objectively identify how many people who watched the video actually ended up following through and pirating the proposed product? Furthermore, how would you be able to identify how often the people who did end up pirating a product actually used it? Maybe a person just wanted to try out a piece of software and only used it for a couple of days. This person may have only caused the company less than $50 in losses. On the other hand, a person may have loved it and used it for years leading to hundreds of dollars in losses. So it's impossible to really analyze the damage caused by a pirating tutorial. And even if it was possible, it is highly likely that the total losses would have cost less than $100,000 in losses. This is simply not worth it for big companies to pursue. Civil cases are not only long and tedious, but also quite expensive. And the worst part is that, at least in America, each party has to pay for their own legal fees according to the American rule. As a result, it makes no sense to spend tens of thousands of dollars on lawyers and gathering enough evidence to actually sue a defendant simply to profit less than 50k. Plus, suing such people is not going to stop others from continuing to make such tutorials and causing further losses. Considering this, it is much more effective for companies to simply patch the exploit or take down a service providing the illicit content rather than going against the people who are simply sharing it online. Not only would this be a faster and more efficient process, but also significantly cheaper. These companies already have security teams, and hackers who have successfully cracked software usually take advantage of low-level kernels or exploits. So, it would just take a couple of hours for professional security teams to make a patch followed up by a simple update. If it was a video on YouTube or download link on some website, it would be very easy for companies to flag such venues and take them down, and this actually happens quite often. For instance, a few years ago, a YouTube channel named Apple TechSpot with over a million subscribers who posted videos here and there about how to get free music and apps got terminated altogether. And this is very common among download links and videos of such nature. So overall, for pirating, the bottom line is that suing is simply not financially smart nor very effective, and this is why people are able to get away with such confessions or posting such content. Company's best option is to take down the content or simply patch the exploit, not pursue legal solutions. But what about criminal cases? If one confesses to speeding or using illicit drugs, that would be a state or federal offense. So how is this possible? While these are state or federal offenses, these are very low level offenses and oftentimes won't even warrant a misdemeanor. For instance, speeding or not completely stopping at stop signs are petty crimes that almost everyone has committed one time or another. Furthermore, past intoxication is not a crime. Anyone can claim that they have been high in the past even directly to a prosecutor. And even if they are telling the truth, they can't be prosecuted because being high is not a crime. It is the possession of illicit drugs that is a crime. The thing is that these people online aren't confessing to homicide or drug trafficking. And even if they were, it would be very difficult to actually prosecute them. If there was a video of a supposed drug deal, where's the proof that the people in the video were actually trading drugs? Maybe they were just acting and maybe the cocaine they traded was actually just powdered sugar.
You can have someone admitting to a crime in written form and it wouldn't mean anything in court. All of this is just hearsay. For a confession to hold evidentiary value, it must be stated by the defendant under oath at a court hearing. As this is not happening when people confess online, this cannot be used against them. Furthermore, there's absolutely no evidence of the event actually occurring. There are no witnesses, no time information, no location information, nothing. What if they smoked marijuana at a location where the drug was legal like in Colorado? It's basically impossible for police to gather enough evidence to actually prosecute a person who has given such a confession, and definitely not worth the time for such petty crimes. On the other hand, for serious crimes, they will definitely investigate further. For instance, when Maddie Roberts suggested to raid Area 51 and actually gain a lot of traction online, the FBI was quick to go to his house and thoroughly investigate him as this was an issue dealing with national security. So yes, for serious threats, high level prosecutors will get involved. But overall, for issues including some sort of pirating, these are classified under civil cases and it makes more financial sense for companies to simply patch the issue or take down download links. For petty crimes like using drugs or speeding, it's very difficult to gather evidence to actually prosecute a given person. It's basically like trying to prosecute a random person off the street. Finally, for serious admissions, well, these are investigated very seriously. But as 99% of confessions fall in the first two categories, we never see these people have any action taken against them. Despite that, I would strongly advise not to make such confessions because it just seems like a stupid thing to do. And companies and prosecutors can try to sue or convict you if they so desired. So the best thing to do if you do get away with such small things is to just keep it to yourself. But that's just what I think. If you guys would like to see more questions just like this one answered logically, then make sure to subscribe and drop a like if you thought this video clearly answered this question. But until next time, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.